guys, it's Kimberly from the Fat Quarter Shop. I'm going to do a live stream, and I just want to apologize for my voice and how I look. I have had the flu, like I got it last week, and I'm still recovering. So that's why we're doing a live stream last week. But um, anyway, we're here now, and we're going to try to do it once a week. So. Okay, um, we have some questions from Instagram. Um, at mom. Sure, Binsky asks, what's the best way to mark a quilt for quilt top, a quilt top for quilting? So I actually like never quilt my own stuff, but if I do, I'll use the friction pin, which I know is like super controversial because people think that the ink doesn't, it'll, it does, it does come back in the cold, but I live in Texas, so I don't really have to worry about that. So I would use either a friction pin or sometimes if you have a darker quilt, you can use like the clover chalk. Um, it just takes longer and I'm not very patient. So that's the second option you can use. And they have like different, like you can, they have like white, yellow, black, blue. They have all kinds of different colors. So it would work on most quilts. Okay. And then at Catherine Daigle 94 uh, has two questions. What are your best advice? For new quilters and also what are the basic accessories we should get when we start quilting? So I would say for a new quilter the most important thing to do is to cut accurately because if you don't cut accurately when you get to the sewing machine you're going to be totally frustrated and then you're not going to like the process. So I would say cut accurately. Uh, for supplies really all you need is a mat, a rotary cutter, some scissors you can either cut fabric or thread with and a really good ruler. I use Creative Grids rulers and um, whatever ruler you use, you wanna use that same brand throughout your whole project just for accuracy because maybe one ruler might be slightly off than another. Okay, and then um, at Jody and Scott Smith, it's actually a pretty popular question, asks, uh, please explain how you start your fabric and why. Okay, so we have a video that Lisa Bonjean filmed with us about two years ago, and you can watch that. But what I do, I am not patient, which we already went over. And so when I start a quilt, I really just want to be able to start it and finish it. And so if you start your fabric, it takes like a couple of hours. But what I do is I'll just, I get, um, it's got the blue lid. I think it's faultless. And um, I just soak it like completely, you know, just spray it and soak it. And then I let it sit on the bathtub or on the floor or wherever. And basically what it does is it makes your fabric super stiff then when you're quilting, you don't, and it takes all the shrinkage out, so you don't have to iron as much when you're sewing. So you don't have to sit and spray and um, like use as much steam because your fabric is so stiff, you're gonna be more accurate. So um, I do it because it makes my process go along a lot easier once I start. And I actually like to cut up and start more than I like to sew. So that's probably why I do it. But I, ever since I started that, when Lisa Bonjean taught me, um, my quilts are so much like better and more accurate. Cool. We're going to pause for a second here, um, just because YouTube's having issues with audio. Okay. Let's just okay, let's connect to the, the microphone, microphone and, and see if that's, that's better. All, All right. right. Go ahead and ask your next question. Okay. Um, at Schimmel Beavers asks, how does one use your, al your alphabet? Alphabetes, do those cute le little letters stick to my fabric or clip pin? So what I do is I use uh, design boards. Um, it's a concept that Lori Holt came up with, and we sell them, or you can make them. I've made them before. So what the design board is is basically um, like poster board with batting on top, so it stays stiff. And then what I do is I'll... Um, all of the It's So Emma patterns or the It's So Emma books that we produce have... They're alphabetized, so you know when you cut four fabric A squares, four fabric B squares, and so everything is labeled. So what we do is I'll just cut it, and then I place my fabric on my design board, which it won't shift much because it's got batting on the top of it, and then I just put the alphabet on top of it. Now, if I'm traveling, I'll use Wonder Clips and just clip it together, but most of the time I don't travel with it, so that's how I use it. Just 
And then you can use that board to like, when you're cutting, you can have it on your cutting board, but then when you go to your sewing machine, you just take your board and move it and it just stays pretty good. Okay, awesome. Um, the next question is from Bats to Beads, and it says, is it necessary to use bias binding for a quilt? Um, if you have a curved edge, like if you curve off your corners, you need bias binding. Or some people do bias binding because they like the way, like if you have a stripe that's on the straight, but you want it to look on the bias, you cut it on the bias. Um, but no, I never do that because that is a lot of work. So yeah, um, but if you have a curve or if you're doing like bias strips and you have a leaf that's going to curve, you have to do bias. So really the only reason I would ever do bias is because it needs to curve. Okay, and then uh, so the 831 asks, what method do you, do you personally use to make perfect half square triangles? There are so many gadgets out there and I sadly struggle with these and I should roll those to cake mixes. So I use triangles on a roll, half square triangle paper. It's the only brand that I use. I've tried lots of others and don't really like them. So I use triangle paper and that's, I love it. Um, and then uh, Jan, Jan Simmons asked, do you have any tips when using flannel to make a quilt? Oh, well flannel will, it has a warp and a weave. All fabric does, but flannel, it's worse. So when you're messing with it, or if you take a piece of flannel fabric, on one way it's going to stretch a lot. And on the other, the other way it's not going to stretch as much. So flannel, I would just say, um, I wouldn't starch it. Um, that wouldn't be something I would do. I would probably just be really careful, use lots of pins, and um, I wouldn't do any triangles or anything like that because your bias is going to be much more stretchy. I don't use flannel that often, but if I do, it's just going to be something super simple. Awesome. Um, and then, oh, uh, one question by Gallus, or uh, Gail's one. Um, she asked, are there any tips on sewing minicky on the back of quilts? Oh, minky. Um, well, um, I would just make sure your long arm quilter is comfortable using it and has used it before because you need a certain type of needle. And if you're, you know, it's not something I would do on my home sewing machine. I mean, you could, but you're going to need like a thicker needle or a needle that works, you know, with thicker fabric. Um, and you wouldn't want to quilt it too close because then you're going to be more likely to get pucker. So I would say just like a bigger overall quilting and I would give it to a long arm quilter. But um, I like Minky for projects that are like the little receiving blankets where you don't have to quilt them. Okay, and then um, Sherry Smart asks, when you put binding on your quilts, uh, do you use a binding tool and if so, which one? So I have a video on binding that explains all of it. So what I do is I'll cut my binding straight. Well, first I'll starch it, let it sit dry. Then I'll starch it, um, oh, and then I'll iron it, and then I use um, straight strips. I'll join them on the diagonal just using, this is just using a straight ruler. But then when I need to put my pieces together like this, I use, um, it's like a Simplicity product. I can't even think of the name of it. Let's see, Simplicity Bias Tape Maker, I think, but it's now discontinued. Um, but I'll use that so that it puts it together nicely. Then I'll just attach it. Um, I really don't use any other tools besides that. Um, and then on the back, I'll do it. I'll use, I'll stitch it by hand. Okay, and then, oh, um, Francis Miller 2737 asks, um, what kind of thread do you use for uh, quilting a quilt? So for piecing, I'll use 50 weight color 2000 on almost everything that's Arifil. And then if I was going to piece a quilt, or if I was going to quilt it on top, I would use the new Arifil 40 weight, which it only comes on a cone. It's a little bit thinner, so um, because you don't want something so thick, so it's just a little bit thinner. So that's what I would use. Um, and then uh, Lorraine Kovar on Facebook asked, "What is the issue with a long arm that skip that skips stitches, breaks thread, but only goes from left to right? She can only go up and down, and from right to left with no problem. But going the other way, she's having problems." 
Um, I don't actually use a long arm, and I've never used one, but I would say check your needle, check your tension, make sure it's clean, like maybe um, air out the machine, or the there might be gunk in the bobbin, maybe air it out. Um, that's what I would say. Okay, and then Lori, or Laura Trimmer asked, um, I'd like to know if you have a recipe for liquid starch that you can make in a bucket or tub for soaking large pieces of fabric. Um, you know, there is a recipe, and I don't remember exactly what it is, but I know that Aditya Sitar knows what it is, so when she comes to film in the summer, I will ask her, and we can do a video on it. But yeah, I know there is one. I haven't ever made it. But she's probably the only person that I know that um, that that knows it. Cool. Um, and here's some questions from YouTube. Um, Angela Rampton is asking, um, do you ever find it hard to start using your fabrics? As in, they look very pretty and like neat piles of fat quarters and pre-cuts. Um, do you need to convince yourself to use them? Um, I try to only buy fabric when I'm going to use it. But I do have some Bonnie and Camille and some Lori Holt fat quarter bundles that are just for decoration. They'll never be used um, in my sewing room. But I'm actually pretty frugal, even though I have a fabric shop. I have lots of buttons and I have lots of thread, but I don't have any excess like fabric or anything like that because I just don't have the space for it, really. Cool. Um, Laura Latino is asking if your corners always match perfectly at first attempt. Actually, they do most of the time. And I think it's because I'm so careful about cutting. Um, but I, I mean, I use the seam ripper every now and then, but um, I'm pretty accurate. I know that's horrible to say. It's horrible. It's all good. Um, Lori D um, says she adores pugs and is wondering how your pug fits in with the family. I love my little doggy. Um, he's good. He's not trained very good. So if he was trained better, I think it would be better. Um, but like, He's really good. The kids, you know, they really wanted the dog. I got them the dog. They don't want to do anything. They don't want to take him for a walk. They don't want to feed him. They don't want to do anything. So he's really my dog, except if they want to play with him. Um, but, I mean, he's a really good dog, except he's just not trained very good, and he doesn't listen at all. Okay. Are pugs your favorite kind of dog? Um... Well, we had a, there was a pug that lived like two doors down from us, and so when Will was a baby, he loved that dog, and so then somehow in our house, we had this pug stuffed animal, and he calls it Piggy, and then he got lots of them, so then there's like Mama Piggy, Daddy Piggy, Grandpa Piggy, Grandma Piggy, I mean, there's like all these pug stuffed animals, so when we got a dog, we had to get a pug. Um, I like small animals, just, I mean, I like smaller dogs just so they can fit in your lap. So any lap dog is good to me. But we got a pug just because Will wanted a pug. Mm -hmm. um, Lily <laughs> is asking, what is the funniest thing your dog has ever done? Oh my goodness. He, like, does those little zoomies, and so, like, he'll just, like, run in circles, and he, like, chases his tail. He still hasn't figured out that his tail is his tail. So he's constantly, like, going in circles, and it's it's funny, but it can be quite annoying. Because <laughs> I'm like, are you that dumb? That's funny. Um, back to quilting, someone is asking, um, does homemade basting spray work? Um, and they're from India, so it's hard to get basting spray there. I don't know what, oh, basting spray, which is like, yeah, when you layer your tops. Yeah, I used it recently. I made a design board for my sewing room, so I took it, you know, you always want to use it outside. It's super, um, it's definitely like a strong chemical. It stinks. You don't want any kids around it. But I did a, um, what do you call it? A, um, design board. And... I was getting grass in it. So you just have to be careful because it's super sticky and whatever you, um, whatever you're going to use it on, you got to use it fast and, you know, it's very, very sticky. Um, some people have used those, like, guns that you use, like, uh, tag guns that you, um, like, you tag your clothes with. 
and it goes through all the layers and that might be something that I might try before I would try basting spray for a big quilt just because I was totally not prepared and there was like grass all in it and then I'm like got batting and grass and I probably should have done it on the driveway <laughs> instead of in the grass. <laughs> Along the same lines, uh, Denise is asking what your favorite method for basting your quilts is. Um, if I am going to ever quilt something, it's going to be about this big and I'm going to use pins and that's it. Um, just because I'm just not very brave, I would, if I was going to do a bigger one, I would probably use safety pins, curved safety pins. Uh, cool. What do you recommend for batting in your quilts? I use, I like thick batting. Um, I like 80-20 or thicker or wool or anything thick. I don't ever use 100% cotton unless it's for a baby just because I feel like after 10 years or so, the batting, it kind of just condenses. And so if you start out thicker, it's going to last longer. Cool. Um, I think the one I use is like Cotton Select by Quilter's Dream. I think that's what I use. All right. Um, and then from the same person, uh, Monica is wondering, um, she uses pins to hold her quilt together before quilting it. Um, is there other ways to do it besides pinning? You could do um, curved safety pins, which are easier because, you know, they're curved, so it's easier to get in and out. Holds really nice. You could use the little gun pins I was talking about. You can get it at, like, Joann's or Michael's. Um, that kind of keeps it in place. Cool. Um, Anne Philbeck is saying she loves to do binding by machine. How do you do yours? So I do it. I'll attach it attach the fabric down all the way around by machine, but then I'll hand quilt just because I don't have very much patience and most of my quilts that I make are pretty big. So I just don't know that I could like hold all that fabric. Um, and the side of my sewing machine, like I have space on the right, but not on the left. So there would really be nowhere for my quilt to go. So I just do it by hand. All right. Um... Nicole is wondering what you say to people when they ask you to make them quilts. Oh, nobody asked me to make quilts. <laughs> no, I mean, everyone in my family, like, we have, like, hundreds of quilts everywhere. Everyone in my family has a quilt, so I think they would probably, yeah. I think everyone in my life either has a quilt or knows that I'm way too busy to make them anything. Like, I'm doing good to get to work, get my kids to school, get my dog to pet smart pick up my kids from dance or basketball or baseball or karate. Like, I have no time. So, I mean, if they ask me, yeah, I don't think anybody, nobody's ever really asked me that. That's funny. Um, Olga wants to know if the thread spool holders behind you are custom made. No, okay, so these are from Home Depot. They are Martha Stewart Living Home Decorator Collection. And, um, like... They're just like individual, and so we just like joined a bunch together. Um, I ordered like three, and somehow they sent me all of these. Or, I sent, or anyway, I got a double order, and instead of sending it back, I just kept it and paid for it, and just was like, oh, we can make a whole wall. That's awesome. Um, Cody Gray is asking, how long have you been sewing for? Since like 1998, so I guess 20 years. I'm getting really old. Yeah. Okay. Um, Sherry Johnson says getting an accurate quarter inch seam is driving her insane. Do you have any tips? I think the biggest thing on that is your foot on your machine. So I always, whatever machine I'm using, because I have a bunch, I will make sure that my quarter inch seam has that guide like on the right side so that your your fabric just butts up against it. And I found that some machines don't have as accurate of one, so I'll get on Amazon and buy a different one. Or, I mean, it's all about that foot on your machine and your cutting. All right. Um, along the same lines as the sewing question, Al Bates is wondering when you got started quilting. 98. So, like, I, like, crocheted when I was little, like, when I was, like, five or six. And then I did cross-stitch when I was, a, like, maybe 10. I still cross-stitch all the time. Cool. 
Uh, Angela McCracken wants to know, what are some tips for making accurate cuts? <clears throat> so I would say make sure your fabric is really nice and flat and, um, you know, it's, there's no wrinkles in it. And when I'm cutting, I always, like, really press down on my um, ruler. Make sure you have a sharp rotary blade. Of course, I starch like crazy. So um, those would be my sure tips. Yeah, I only use my ruler. Like, I only use my Creative Grids ruler. The only time I would ever use my mat for measuring would be if I'm trying to measure, like, borders or something. So always use a ruler. Okay. What is your favorite quilt you've ever made? Oh, my goodness. I don't know. It's really hard. I like all the designer mysteries that we've done. Um, not even trying to like sell that or plug it. I like those because I'm involved in picking the fabric and designing it and coming up with the concept for it. So I always like those because I pick stuff I like. Um, so I would say probably one of the designer mystery quilts. Cool. Uh, oh. Uh, what is your favorite dance move since your daughter dances? Oh my gosh, okay, so um, I don't dance. That's like not something I do, but there's this whole thing going on in our family right now. What's it called? What's that thing called where you go like that? Oh, the oh. Flossing. Flossing. The flossing, okay, so so we have this whole thing going on because we were at dinner with um, one of my like high school friends, like lifelong friends, known her my whole life. Like since I was born, I've known her. And, you know, I've got four kids. She's got two. My niece and nephew were there. So there was, like, ten kids in this little tiny Mexican restaurant. And one of my fun, one of my sons is, like, so hilarious. Like, I'm going to have him come on the camera one day. He is, like, the funniest kid you've ever met in your life. And he will do anything, say anything. He's hilarious. So he stands up. And we're all looking at him, like, what are you going to do? And he starts doing the floss. And I'm like... That looks like the Pee Wee Herman dance. You're not even doing it right. So then my daughter gets up in this restaurant and she starts doing it. And then like my niece and nephew start doing it and like everyone in this restaurant is like staring at us. And I'm like, you all need to just sit down. But you know, my daughter's like trying to do it like for real and then my son's like doing some, I don't know what he was doing. He was definitely not doing the floss. Definitely not. He was doing like the Pee Wee Herman dance. And me and my husband were so embarrassed. We were like, just sit down, all of you. <laughs> it kind of got out of control. Oh, that's great. Um, Livia Boggs is asking, have you ever done much applique, and if so, do you needle turn? Um, so, yeah, if I'm going to applique, I do needle turn because I feel like it looks better. Um, I would love to be able to machine applique. Um, I have some friends like Debbie Taylor who used to work for us. She does beautiful machine applique. I think I just don't have the patience for it. But, yeah, I'll um, needle turn. I'm not really good at applique. I love the way it looks. And like every time I do it, I think, oh, it's going to look wonderful. And then it just, it looks horrible. I'm like the worst applique. You don't want any quilt that I've ever done with applique. Oh. Um, Liv and PJs is asking, you recently talked about having starch fabric drying in your bathroom. Can you explain this? So it's kind of the same thing we talked about earlier in the video is I just starch my fabric like completely. And then, okay, so the way my house is set up, I have this like, bedroom and the side of the house and it's my sewing room and my office and it's connected to a bathroom so nobody uses this bathroom like it's not except for like all my fabric is in there and the closet in the bathroom so basically it's an unused bathtub and a shower that's unused so what I do is I'll lay all my fabric like on it's soaking wet and starch and I lay it as flat as I can all the way around the bathtub and then when the bathtub is full then I have a hanger in the shower and I hang fabric on the shower, on the on the um, like hanger, and then I hang it in there. And then there's like this bench in the shower, and I'll put it on the bench. And then if I if that doesn't if I'm out of room there, put it on the floor. So yeah, nobody uses this bathroom. All right. Um, oh, you got some? Okay, yeah. go for it. Yeah. All right. We have two people asking um, Debbie Giordano and Testy Marie. Um, do you recommend or what are your thoughts on fusible batting? Oh, I like fusible batting. I think it's great, yeah. And I would definitely get double fusible so it's fusible on both sides. But yeah, definitely, yeah, I love that stuff. And how uh, Karen Schaefer Edmondson asks, how do you recommend storing uh, rulers to prevent warping? 
Oh, okay. So I have, I always just keep them flat. Um, I have one drawer. I just made sure I have this one drawer and I keep all my rulers in there and I keep them flat. I don't like let them toss. And then I keep on my um, sewing table, I have a, one of the, like a ruler pal. Basically, we sell lots of versions of those. Like there's a Riley Blake one, there's a Fat Quarter Shop one, there's a Doohickey one. They're like ruler pals. And um, I keep the two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, six and a half inch square. And that way I can always get to them. And then I keep like a six and a half by 18 and a half inch on my table, just in those racks. And I don't have a ton of rulers. I pretty much, I mean, I have a lot of Creative Grids rulers, but I don't have a lot of the like specialty, you know, funny rulers because... I don't use those as much, but I just keep them flat in a drawer, and I have like a 20 and a half inch, which is really big, and I just keep it against like a wall in between a furniture so my kids don't like mess it up. And then um, Vicki Weber and Beth <coughs> Guernsey, I think is that how you say it, uh, they're asking about your quilt labels. How do you label your quilts, or what do you use for your quilt labels? So I wish I was a lot better at that. Um, I had some made... That, and they just have like my name, it just says Kimberly Jolly, the year, and then it'll say fatquartershop.com. And I use those, but um, I sometimes don't label them. I'm really bad about it. Um, there's a new site out there called Dutch Label Shop that I've used. We've done some sweet water labels. So, um, yeah, I, was, I wish I was better at that. But I just make sure if I do it, which is not often, it'll have like my name, my website, and the year. Jennifer O'Neill Carpenter is asking, uh, what is your favorite sewing machine that you've used? Um, so I daily use the Juki 98Q or something. I don't know. It's like a $900 sewing machine. That's what I use most of the time because it's very, it's like not industrial. Maybe it's semi-industrial, but it is fast and um, very powerful. So that's what I use the most. I also have like a baby lock and a Bernina and I'll use those for when I put my binding on I always use like a like a nicer machine because you need a walking foot um, I think the Bernina the one that like any of them that have the built-in walking foot that's like my preference to put my binding on and I'll use my baby lock for applique but I usually just use a cheap sew machine and then another question from Jennifer O'Neill Carpenter is what is your favorite time of day to quilt Oh, at night, um, when my kids go to bed. Um, and I don't quilt that much. I don't really get to, um, just because I'm so busy. But yeah, I would say night, nighttime. Um, at Easy Patchwork asked, um, what are your favorite colors to work with? Oh, pink and aqua, for sure, and white. Like, yeah. And then um, I think uh, purple, I think this might go on the last sewing machine question, but Purple Diva 18 asked, um, she's been sewing for four years and makes simple projects, and she was wondering if you have a suggestion on a sewing machine that would be a good step up from her uh, singer simple. Um, I think that like, Janome, those are good sewing machines. I used to have one of those. That's like a um, like a in between sewing machine, but it works great. Um, I would say if you're just looking for something. Because I just think you don't have to have a simple sewing machine. Like, I would rather spend my money on fabric or thread or buttons than a sewing machine. So, I think the Janome's are good. Um, Bernina's are good. Baby Locks are good. I mean. And then, um, Kathy Trucco asked, can you, wash me? can you tell me why some fabrics need to be pre-washed, but not quilt quality fabrics from FQS? So, um, if you buy fabric that is like cheaper. It's going to have less thread count. It might um, it might like warp more. It might stretch more. It might not have, it just not, and it might not, the dyes might not have set. So, you know, you just have to be so careful with the reds. Um, so when I starch my fabric, I've never had an instance where any of that any, because I only use, you know, like really nice fabric. Um, I've never had an instance where it runs or the red or the blue leaks because it would be on my bathtub or it would be on my ironing board where I starch. Um, but yeah. And when I, if I, 
if I wash a quilt, which is like not very often, I would put in a color catcher when I was doing that. Okay, uh, Jennifer Foster wants to know, if you start a quilt on one machine, should you only continue sewing on the same machine for accuracy? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Cool. And another question from Jennifer is, have you ever used box starch versus spray starch? No. I don't even know what that is. What is it? Yeah, I haven't. Um, and, yeah, I only use the one with the blue lid, and, like, I'm super, um, like, if I see it, like, they have it at Costco and HEB, and that's it. Like, Randall's doesn't have it. Like, when I see it, I get it, because they usually only have, like, six on the shelf. Well, I could go through six bottles and nothing, like, one quilt. So, yeah, I just buy it when I see it. All right. Um, Anita Brown is asking, when you sit down to sew, do you have a book or music playing in the background? Oh, I have TV. Real bad TV. I watch investigative discovery about murders and crazy stuff. So yes, I listen to really bad TV. And then my husband, Kevin, who runs Fat Core Shop, he like comes in there. He's like, are you going to kill me? I'm like, just get out. Or like Dateline, 2020. I mean, any, anything like that. Yeah, I have to have TV on. If, if there's nothing on those channels, then it's Netflix. All right. Um, along the same lines, R. White is asking, um, do you listen to podcasts? And if so, do you have any good suggestions for podcasts? Okay, I listen to like 100 podcasts. I have these little beats right here. I wear them all day at work. When my employees come in, like half the time I don't even hear them. So I just lis I listen to Manina Files, um, My Favorite Murder, um... Oh my goodness, I should have been prepared. Like, so many. Um, the last podcast on the left. Uh, Somebody Knows Something, Up and Vanished, The Atlanta Monster. Um, I will look, and before we do the next thing, I will write down all of them and I'll read them to you. Because I love podcasts. Yeah, I listen to those. So I listen to those when I work, when I'm at dance conventions, and um, when I'm driving. And if my kids are not in the car, because obviously I listen to really bad stuff. Oh, and then like 48 hours, every one of their episodes is on the podcast. So not only do I watch it, then I'll listen to it. All right. Cody Gray is asking, will you show us how to hand quilt in a video sometime? Yeah, we can do that. We have a guest coming maybe in the summer that's going to go over that. So yeah. And we have a video right now that Polly Minnick and Lori Simpson did. Jen Kingwell. And Jen Kingwell did one. So we have those two videos. But yeah, we will show that. Um, we have somebody really good coming that's going to show that. Perfect. Do you guys have any questions? Yeah. Um, at So To Smile asked, uh, who's your favorite designer? Oh, well, it would have to be like Lori Holt or Bonnie and Camille. Sorry. Nobody hate me. And then Penny Jr. Bug um, asked, are there any tips for someone who is going to be starting their first quilt? Um, I would say just have, um, just go slow. Don't buy too many supplies. You know, when I first started, I like gave up because I was like, there were too many rules. I took this class and they were like, you can only use this thread and you can only use this fabric and you can only... There was just too many rules. So I would say just start with a few things. You know, don't go buy a crazy $10,000 sewing machine. Just start um, with just an easy project, too, so that you don't get overwhelmed. Because that's what happened to me. And, and there, the lady who was teaching the class, it was just too many rules. Like, you got to use this brand of thread. No, you don't. Do whatever you want. And then um, Purple Diva 16 asked, do you have a preference of pressing seams to one side? open pressing seams uh, or spinning seams? Okay, I never spin seams. I hate it. I think it's like the worst thing ever because um, the stitches come out and it just like, um, no, no spinning seams. But I do both press to one side to the darker or if, if my seams are not going to nest, like if you've got just crazy half square triangles all over the place, then I will press open. So I guess first I would press to one side but if they're not going to nest, I'm going to press them open. 
All right. Um, Lemon Pites is asking, do you use distilled water or filtered water or tap water in your iron when you steam? Oh, the sink water. Okay. Yeah. Um, and do you think it affects uh, the iron function at all? I don't. Um, I think having a good iron is important. You know, I'm not going to say any brands, but there's this one brand that I swear every time I've had one of the irons, brown water comes out. Um, I use an Aliso, either the yellow or the pink, the one that pops up. And as long as um, you don't touch it too much, like while it's heating up, don't touch it. Let it heat up and then let it, um, because sometimes if you start touching it before it heats up, um, that would cause the brown maybe. Um, and then I try not to leave my iron with too much water in it because it might be a month before I sew again so that when I turn it on, there's not just like old water sitting in there that could have got brown. Uh, I've got two more. Uh, one from Vicki Weber. Um, and do you have a pattern for the half square triangle quilt hanging on the wall that you do your other live streams from? It's the one hanging in, in the inner in office. office but. So that is the cake mix pattern. Um, if you email, um, email Nova at fatquartershop.com and she can look up exactly what pattern that is, but I think it's a cake it's mix. cake mix number one. Yeah. Okay, cake number mix one. number one. And Okay, there did. isn't a pattern. You know what? There's not a pattern. I just used cake mix number one. I made it up. Um, but used, if you want... Yeah, you used um, two pads, I think. Yeah, okay. I think I used two pads and then I just um, placed the blocks however. But if you wanted like a picture of that, you could email us and we could take a picture and um, send it to you. Then uh, I think the last question here is from Carol Holton, um, asking about the thread spool racks on the wall. Do you sell them? No, I got them at home. You, they don't sell them in the Home Depot, only Home Depot online. They are Home Decorators Collection by Martha Stewart, and I, they were not very expensive. I think they were like 40 or $50. They're not very expensive. Cool. Um, Teresa is asking, what do you use for inspiration for your awesome quilt patterns? Oh my goodness, I just sew what I like. So I love flying geese, I love half square triangles, I like nine patches, I like simple things that can look really pretty without being, you know, too much work. Um, and pink and aqua. Uh, Laura Mendoza wants to know what your favorite type or style of quilt is. Um, I like traditional. I like bright, happy colors, simple. Stars, I love stars. Cool. Um, oh, oh, and Jennifer, Jennifer Foster, she's, she's the one that had asked about box starch. She, she said box starch you can mix yourself, and she has used it with crochet. Oh, for like for like setting. What do you call that? You call it like you like set your block. You block it. Yeah, you block it. Yeah, I haven't used it, but yeah, I know what you're talking about now. Cool. Um. Okay. okay, Angela McCracken is saying, um, she knows you said you don't really wash your quilts, but if you had to wash, what water temperature slash cycle would you use? And line dry or dry on low? So I, um, cause my boys quilts, I mean, they've all been vomited on. So like the kids quilts have all been washed. So I would wash on cold water with gentle cycle. And then as soon as it's done, don't let it just sit in there. I take it and just put it outside over a fence and let it dry outside. I would never put it in the dryer. All right. Um, we've got a lot of questions on YouTube. Oh, gosh. It depends how long we want to go. You can just keep doing the questions and then I'll do okay. this in a minute. Sounds good. Do you have any? any um, yeah, we have a couple here. Um, so... Um, uh, so, so to smile, um, ask, do you have any preference to batting? Um, so I just like thicker batting. Um, I think I use Quilter Stream Cotton Select because it's got polyester in it. Anything that has a little bit of poly, not 100% poly, but thicker. I also like wool batting. And then um, Vaughn Kemp asks, uh, do you have a color palette that you favor more than others or one that you just keep going back to? Pink and aqua and white. Okay. Um, and then Clyde the Burner 2017 asked, uh, um, who is your mentor if you have one? 
my dad, but we won't go into that today. <laughs> That'll take too long. Um, Olivia Boggs is asking, do you make totes? Um, not really. We have some really good videos um, from Annie Ungren from By Annie, and I loved when she came. It was like so inspirational because it was like, oh my gosh, I can do that, but I don't really have the patience, and I think I just always forget like all the steps. For my daughters, um, she had to do a project, and we had to make a like a colonial pouch. And it didn't even come out that good. And I was like, gosh, I could have done something a lot better. But it had to be like hand sewn. It had to be like leather. But when she told me about it, I was like, oh, we can do the cutest pouch ever. And then I had to look it up. And I was like, oh, we have to make this like old man, like leather thing that holds pistols. Yeah, no. Anyway, it looks horrible. I hope she gets a good grade. Um, let's, let's see. see. Um. R. White uh, is asking if we could do a video how to crochet edging on a pillowcase with Lori Holt's chunky thread. That would be a great idea. So, I'll talk to Lori about that. Cool. And Brenda Walgreen is asking, uh, can quilts with wool batting be machine washed if you don't mind that crinkly antique look? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I think they have to be hand washed. I'm not really sure on wool. Okay. Um, Olivia Boggs is asking, have you ever sewn with cork fabric? No, but I want to. It looks awesome. Yeah, like I, that's on my list to do, yes. Um, we've got a few more. Um, Brittany Gray Warner is asking if you like crunchy or smooth peanut butter. Smooth. And then uh, Lisa Schneider, Sour, I'm sorry if I said that wrong, asked, do you have a thread preference, cotton, poly, cotton blend? Oh, I only use cotton. Only use cotton. Um, and then uh, Mimi Frazier is asking, um, hello from Nova Scotia, do you do free motion quilting? If yes, what advice would you give to a beginner? I don't. Um, I'm just too scared to do it. Uh, yeah, I don't. But I would say just go slow. I know the biggest trick is you gotta be steady. You can't go like super fast and super slow so that your stitch length stays the same, but that's totally out of my league. And we actually just had someone pipe in, Brooke Haig, Hag or Haig, I'm so sorry if I said that wrong, um, who has um, washed with wool batting. And she says, I machine wash my quilts with wool batting and dry on low, they are fine. Okay, well good. Cool, so for you two that was yes you can. Yeah. Machine wash wool. Um, let's see. Uh, Aspasia Baker is asking, do you recommend fold over binding for beginners or should I use strip binding? I would use, I would make the binding yourself. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't use like the bias tape that you get like at the store. I wouldn't use any of that. Okay. Um, Terry Gordon is asking, do you ever sew clothes? No. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Uh, do you have any questions? Um, I think uh, one of the ones is from Idy Jane. She asked, how did you get started in this business? Um, it was just really a fluke. I am actually a CPA, so is my husband. I worked um, in venture capital during the internet bust and so I knew I wasn't gonna have a job soon so I just kind of made up my own job and didn't really think it was gonna do um, I didn't think it was gonna become this but yeah so today I kind of brought some stuff just to kind of show you guys some of the stuff that I've been working on and that we've been working on here so I'm just gonna give you like this is a sneak peek of our designer mystery for 2018 it's supposed to be a mystery but I just wanted to show y'all how pretty it is but I made this one and it's Joanna Figueroa fabrics and I love it um and I'm not a green person anybody who works here knows like don't put green in something but this is awesome because it's not really like green anyway I love it um yeah I love this quilt it's gonna go home with me as soon as I can so that's like something that if you've signed up you can get a little peek and then this, um, 
This is from our Sew Sampler box. So I actually made this last year. It was designed by Lori Holt and in each of the Sew Sampler block boxes from like April of 2016 to March. No, April of 2017 to this year, March next month. You got a little pattern in three different sizes. And so I thought that was kind of cute. And then I was going to show you the cross stitch that, um, that I just did. Um, so this is designed by Lori, and I cross stitch, and I love it. It looks so cute. I don't really know where I'm going to put it, but this is kind of how it looks when it's framed. And then next week, I'll bring some other stuff to show you guys. And, I mean, obviously, if we do a book or we do a block of the month that's designed by us, I'll sew that just because I want it to be 100% accurate. I want to make sure the seams nest, so I get to do all that fun stuff. Oh, I am good with questions. Okay, so we'll just see you next time. Thanks yeah. for joining us. I've got two more, but we can save them for next week. Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. So keep sending your questions mm -hmm. in, and we will save them. They're not forgotten. Yeah, we'll answer them next week yeah. for you. Okay. Cool.